Beauties. Welcome to September 2016. This is Gwendolyn. Welcome back to the channel. Or if it's your first time here, welcome. This video is going to be a monthly tarot scope for Aries for September 2016. Um, and while I shuffle, I'll just say a little bit about some of the astrology that's happening um, for the first few weeks of September. Um, we're going to be having a Mercury retrograde. We're actually in it now. It started August 30th, and it's going to be happening for most of September through the 21st, 22nd, depending upon where you live. Um, and so it's really a time to do all those things that start with re, like revisit, review, revise, reconsider, relax, um, all the things that mean like kind of taking a step back and redoing something or finishing up details. It's a Mercury retrograde in Virgo, so it's particularly governed details. Like if you're editing something, great time for that. Anything that you started before and need to finish up now, um, it's a really good time for that, Aries. So through, through September 21st, 22nd, a uh, really good time to just revisit old projects. It's not a great time to sign new contracts to make medical appointments, to make any large purchases, because during a Mercury retrograde, anything that is started can be undone once Mercury goes back direct. So that's the astrology, and then without any further ado, I'm just going to get straight into Aries for September 2016. The Mercury retrograde affects all of us, though. So it looks like the month opens up, Aries with you maybe feeling a little out of sorts or not feeling at the top of your game um, or the top of your own energy. The reason that I say that, Aries, is because you've got King of Wands in reverse and Wands is a fire sign. Um, king is, he's the king of fire and so the master of fire. Now it could be any fire sign really. It could be Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. But because you're the fire sign and this is your reading and you're coming out of the gates first, I'm reading this as you, Aries. So normally you may feel like on top of it, um, at the head of your own game, you do this uh, King of Wands does things in his own unique eccentric way. But in reverse, it means like you just feel like a little wet blanket's on top of you or feeling like things are dampened or in shadow. You may just not be shining your normal, vibrant, fiery, passionate side areas as, as September opens. And it's possible that it may have something to do with money or security. Ten of coins is the most amount of coins that you can get on a card. And ten of coins usually reflects... Um, inheritance or some large sum of money, some accumulation. So this could be regards to a pile of money that you thought you were going to get that doesn't turn out to be as much or a reward like a, a job promotion or a bonus that turns out to be less than you thought it was. And that's part of what I get with this King of Wands looking at Ten of Coins in reverse is that feeling like a little, it's perhaps even just disappointment with this money situation or security situation or it could even be like um, if there's any sort of legal battles this is could be like the judgment or the the um, you know whatever whatever has to do with security it can even just be meaning that you are not have as much money available to you at your disposal as you thought you would because this is the this is the couple inside the castle feeling safe and secure the ten of coins usually means a lot of money that was handed down to that couple to make them more stable. Um, it's it's the accumulation of money from good decisions being made over time. So in the reverse position, that may be money that is, a, is there, but it's just not available to you right now. Or it could mean less than you thought it was going to be. Or it's, it's something to do with that, or security that you thought the house and the castle was stable, but it ends up being not as stable as you thought. That's ten of coins in reverse energy. Um, but it does seem, too, that you are in a position at the beginning of the month where you, you get an idea that it motivates you, that you're optimistic about. That's Page of Swords energy. Swords represent the mental realm and represent ideas. And so this is like carrying one idea, having a belief and going with it, standing up on the mountains and declaring it and saying, this is what I believe, this is what I believe to be true, I claim this ideology. 
Um, this also could be like a young air sign showing up in your environment. So that could be either Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Page of Swords is like the young person of the air sign. Or it could just be someone who has that um, archetype to them where they... Pages are always about optimism and motivation, and swords represent ideas or thoughts. So it's someone who's got like a, a dogmatic uh, conviction towards something or a belief that they're pursuing, that they want to learn more about, that they kind of want to crusade for. And chair, so this could be you or someone else, Aries. Um, but the sense I get is that you get this renewed idea after feeling maybe a little bit out of sorts, or like if some if you get bad news regarding money, or you thought you were gonna get that raise or the inheritance or the job that would bring the money, and you're kind of disappointed. You get this new idea, and you get this like fresh optimism. Could be even from a young person, or it could be that. They give you the new idea. This could, like I said, be you, Aries, or that air, young air sign. Or it could just be like the younger side of yourself. But it leads you to victory. Um, Chariot is a card where he always crosses the finish line. This is hard control. This is a card of controlling things with your mind, with your judgment, with knowing whether to go left or to go right. The reason that Chariot succeeds, he goes at a very fast pace and he makes decisions in intuitively and he can even do so impulsively because he knows where that finish line is and the reason he succeeds is that he's able to balance energies between the left and the right between left brain right brain and the analytical logical side and then the wild gut instinct passionate sign um, he's able to like turn on a dime and adjust to changing circumstances if there's a pebble in the road he knows how to guide his chariot around it so this is a card about knowing how to make instinctual decisions. You can see these crescent moons, they represent the feminine and access to the subconscious. So it's really saying that he's not, you can see there's not, there's not a lot of resistance in this card. He's not making thing. he's not making decisions that are, um, overly considered he's deciding at a moment he's trusting his gut and he's following the road and he crosses the finish line every time so this is a card about control about you know having control over your emotions and decisions but yet being flexible enough to change and adapt to changing circumstances and with that comes victory and like again crossing the finish line um kind of energy so there is success here with this new idea that comes about so be on the lookout for that, whether it comes from you or someone else. This is like a new young ideology, new way of thinking, perhaps. Um, in the middle of the month, I'm seeing that you may need to wait something out. The reason I'm saying that is that your strength is being challenged here. Strength is in reverse. And then you also have hanged man in reverse. Normally, hanged man, this is its upright position, is where he's hanging upside down. And strength is about enduring things, having fortitude in a gentle way. These two cards are almost opposite, actually. Um, chair, they're actually right next to one another in the tarot. This is seven in the major arcana, and this is eight in the major arcana. So this is having control, this is making firm decisions, this is like, you know, ruling with a heavy fist or just having a dedicated uh, focus and controlling things with the mind. This one is called soft control, where this is hard control. This one is sort of being even more flexible and not, not forcing things. This card is very forceful. It wants to force the horses forward, it wants forward motion, it wants, you know, achievement, conquering victory. This card strength is much softer, much more capable of enduring, sort of like going long distance. And the reason she's able to open the lion's mouth is because she coaxes it open. It's through her gentleness, through her ability to remain in the situation without giving up that gives her the conquering of the lion. She's not forcing that lion to do anything. She's holding it gently and it, it opens, she's able to open its jaws slowly because she has courage and trust in herself and fortitude and strength. With that card in the reverse position, there's some way in which you feel like your strength 
is being challenged or that it's kind of wavering. This, this whole line here for September, um, you know, King of Wands in reverse, King of Fire in reverse, Strength in reverse, and then Ten of Swords says there's something that's testing your patience. And in the middle of the month here with Strength being challenged, there is Hanged Man in reverse too. In his upright position, he actually sees the world from a different perspective and he gets enlightenment from that. He um, marches to the beat of his own drum and he does things in his own unique way. He's not too worried about what other people think. He's kind of like King of Wands. King of Wands is eccentric and does things in his own unique way. But Hanged Man just kind of steps out of society and he's not worried about accomplishing anything. He's like, I'm just happy here by myself. I'm happy doing what I want to do. Um, and because he's able to flip things around, he finds comfort and enlightenment through a different perspective. He's not seeing everything the way that everyone else does. And he's not worried about other people's judgments of him. He's He finds contentment just where he is. So when I see this card in the reverse position, it makes me wonder, is there a way in which you're caring too much about what other people think? Is there a way in which you need to see things from a different perspective but don't know how or that you're afraid to try something new? You're, you're having doubts about seeing things from in a different way. There's something with Hangman in reverse and with Strength in reverse. There's something that's testing your patience is what I'm going to say in the middle of the month. Um, but you literally, both of these cards say hang in there. Um, in Also in the middle of the month, Aries, there is King of Cups showing up. And he is a compassionate, loving um, person. He is usually the master of emotions. And he's usually considered like the perfect partner and a, a wonderful father figure. So he is someone who is is loving, makes decisions based on considering other people's feelings. Sometimes he can show up as a water sign, so that's Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces. But either way, he's someone who is just like a thoughtful, loving, caring, sensitive, compassionate person. And he's usually got some sort of authority, but he's a wonderful partner, wonderful father. Um, he's showing up for you mid-month. So if you need to, if you need to have any um, any decisions made or if you need any advice that's regarding the heart like he's a good person to lean on he has good advice regarding the heart he can make he can see things from a heart perspective um, and he he's definitely an ally for you in the middle of the month there is something that wants to come through this is new money um, new assets new possessions um, new, and you can see the coins represent the physical world and values. So it could be new money, it could be a new job, new lifestyle. And aces are always new beginnings. So there's a new beginning that wants to come through to you. The universe wants to give it to you. You just need to put yourself in a receptive position to it. In the reverse position, ace of coins says there's something that you doubt about it or that you're fearful about, you, that you may feel delay or in shadow where you don't feel ready or trusting that you deserve it, or some there's some kind of block or some kind of complication, some kind of resistance that is not allowing the Ace of Coins energy to come through easily and fully. So I'd like you to consider in what way can you be more receptive or in what way are you not being receptive? In what way is doubt or fear playing a role that is blocking this Ace of Coins that the universe is trying to hand to you, Aries? Because there's a new lifestyle. There's new money. There's new assets. There's something tangible and new that wants to come into your existence. But there's something that is holding it, holding it right below the surface. And you might have questions to King of Cups, whoever this person is, that may help you answer that. They may help, this could be like a new boss, or it could be the person who who gives you an idea um, about how to make new money. Don't, don't discount that idea because it's there. It's just that your lack of belief in it can keep it in reverse, keep it in check. But the King of Cups person, either this water sign or the person who embodies the perfect partner, the perfect um, husband, the perfect um, father, 
that person can give you good insight. They ha they're on your side. They they have information for you that's going to be helpful. Or they could just be like a shoulder to cry on, someone to go to and ask questions about like regarding your heart. Um, then towards the end of the month, Aries, this is Ten of Swords, which is needing to let go of a cycle. It's needing to let go of a belief system. Swords represent the mental element, so they represent ideas and beliefs. And you can see collectively, these ideas and beliefs are actually killing the man. So this card is sometimes called bottoming out, or I sometimes call this card also, it's darkest before the dawn. It means that you need to let go, or sometimes it's called also negative thinking, because it's all these swords that are like draining the life force out of the person. But it's a 10 card, which is a completion of a cycle card. It's the last card before a new level of awareness comes about. Um, when the next card after 10s are pages, which is all about being optimistic and willing and try, beginning again, beginning anew, being y a young novice. So this is saying let go of all your old ways of thinking. There's something that's completing about your old belief systems. Or if you hold on to them, they're only going to drain your life force out. There's You need to break out of these. You need to walk away from these swords, let them go, this negative thinking or belief system or something old that is coming to completion. It's You just need to um, let it let it die in some ways. Let it, its life cycle is completed. That's also what the 10 says. And then towards the end of the month, the sense I get is after the Mercury retro is done, after the 21st, 22nd, you have some really nice energy here. You have Sun, which is one of the most positive cards in the deck. It's all about joy, fulfillment, radiance, um, feeling like life is full, golden, the sun is shining on you. There's male and female energy here, so there's coupledom energy. There is uh, the sunflowers, which are bursting forth. It's also integration of the male and female sides of yourself. So when you come to integration you you become a whole and you can shine forth so it's really a card of authenticity of joy of just feeling vibrant and alive and like when the sun is shining on you so it's funny how there's a sort of dark night of the soul but once you break through that and it could be even accepting a shadow side of yourself and integrating that recognizing that they both have value um it's also a nice time to focus on your relationships and just enjoy the good things in life that's a lot of what sun is about there is some change that some tables are turning that you may be resistant to um this is wheel of fortune which as you can see in the card it's a card where whatever the, the wheel of time is turning and whatever's on top is going to be on the bottom and whatever's on the bottom is going to be on the top so this is like tides are turning Seasons are changing, time is evolving. Um, in the in the Rider weight, we see the four axes of the zodiac wheel, which we have Aquarius, we have uh, Taurus, which is represented by the bull. Aquarius is represented by the man. We have um, Leo the lion, and then we have the eagle, which is representing Scorpio. It's sort of, it's sort of saying like as the celestial sphere rotates, um, so time rotates, and so things change. Tables turn, t the you know seasons change. So this is just a card about acknowledging change and that change is occurring and happening. When it's in the reverse position, you're either resistant to the change or it's not happening fast enough for you. So you may consider just accepting this card as like things are changing at their own pace. They're evolving. Let them evolve. Work with the pace of nature or work work with whatever changes are happening instead of resisting against them or wanting them to go faster. Um, and then I see this is a great card for Aries. This is Knight of, of uh, Wands. So you're going to get some of your youthful energy back. If you see that King of Wands... Um, is here. These two are, are sort of like father and son, but page, sorry, knight of, knight of wands is someone who is daring, who's passionate. It's, it's a lot like you Aries, basically. Daring, passionate, um, like full of energy, someone who has a lot of fire, is willing to go for it, willing to fight, willing to like charge into battle. There's a lot of bravery in this card, uh, courageousness, confidence, 
So work with that at the end of the month because you're going to be ready to take on a battle. Just be careful when this card shows up that you're not overly cocky, not overly confident, not overly arrogant. Because sometimes Knight of, Knight of Fire or Knight of Wands can be a little too gung-ho and uh, he can be too fiery where he doesn't consider other people's, his effect on other people's. He can kind of burn people sometimes. But ult the high side of this card is courageousness, confidence, bravery, daring, willingness to go for it and take on any challenges. So that's my reading for you, Aries, for September. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can put those down in the comments. If you've already subscribed, thank you. And if you'd like to subscribe, that will let you know when I have new videos ready. Um, it'll send a message to your inbox. And just as always, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Yours in the stars.